family history here, which is a big family history for you. It absolutely is. It's very important for the restaurant. We started in Winnipeg in the early 70s, and it was my grandmother uh, that started off our first restaurant business. It was carried on after that with my mother and my father, and uh, all the children, there's four of us in total, we started along with our parents as well. So we're third generation doing this, and we've been in Winnipeg now since 1970. Wow. Uh, it's 2007, so it's a long history in Winnipeg. Uh, I have to say a big thank you to all the Winnipeggers out, out there for all the support that they've given us over the years. Uh, we truly love this city, and it's good to be here. Well, you know what? Tanner and Lindsay, who are working behind the cameras right now, sorry, I have to get them working on smell -O vision because uh, this mint. is mint. Yes. You have so many flavors and smells and aromas going on here. Unfortunately, what happens with Indian food, people lump, uh, lump it and just call it curry. <laughs> and it's a bit of a disservice to all the ingredients and the fresh things that we have over here. Um, I know it looks like a lot going on over here today, but believe it or not, this is just a small cross-section of what we use in our daily cooking. Uh, we're doing two quick items today. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is a spiced cauliflower and potato. And I'm just going to use just a couple of little things that we have uh, placed out over here. But yeah, as you can tell, there's... Well, oh, awesome. Right okay, so a quick explanation of what we have going on. Um, well, uh, some of the primary things that we use, um, and I really want to talk about, are gutta masala. That's mm -hmm. right there, and you can go ahead and take a quick smell of that. That is the primary ingredient in a lot of Indian cooking, and most any good Indian restaurant and most Indian homes actually have their own gutta masala. I'll call it a, a family flag, if you will. It's the, the kind of spice that they like to cook with piquantness, heat level wise, maybe some families like a little bit more green carbon in their mix, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a blend that we've used for 35 years in Winnipeg. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Something else I'm really proud of, Hungarian paprika. Hungarian? Well, uh, it's a bit of a misconception that all the best spices come from India. Uh, there are other parts of the world that deliver exceptional spices, and Hungarian paprika uh, is a fantastic var var variety of paprika because of its color, mm -hmm. its texture, and the fact it's a, it doesn't... Uh, add a lot of heat or piquant to the food. Wonderful. This is intriguing. Okay, this is, uh, this is ginger garlic paste. Um, you might come across it in some Indian cookbooks, and if you don't, it's not a very good Indian cookbook. It's, uh, it's a bit of a starter for a lot of dishes. It starts to sizzle in the pan, uh, and it lends its flavor to a lot of foods. Mm -hmm. Tomato blend over here. This will add a little bit of uh, sour to our food if we ever need it. This is onion base, fresh onion base. This will add sweet to our food anytime we need it. Onions, caramelized onions are very, very sweet. So that'll add a bit of uh, uh, sugar to our food when we need it, okay? And the two front dishes here. This is ginger, um, uh, just sliced ginger. We're gonna be using this as a garnish for our um, a cauliflower at the end, and it'll pair really nice with our wine. I think Darren's working on that right now. Um, this one over here is a sister or brother, if you will to our paprika, and nice. this is turmeric. Oh. So ground turmeric as well. This is, and there, I could talk hours and hours about turmeric, and, and the reason is, this is what's commonly um, uh, uh, mistaken for curry powder. Yes, okay. I was gonna say. And a, and a little bit overused as curry powder. People end up using this as a primary ingredient where they will just you know, throw in a little bit of chicken or a little bit of beef, and they'll throw in a whole tablespoon worth of curry powder. And the problem with this is this is a digestive. And uh, if you work, if you if you use too much of it, it actually plays with your system. Uh, th that's another thing with Indian food. Um, they're all very Ayurvedic or homeopathic, if you will. They all have properties um, that will affect your body and your system. So when you're cooking with it, you have to be careful. And you have to know a little bit about what you're doing so that uh, the end product will yield something fantastic. So when people overuse this one over here, they will have pro they they can have problems in their system. So. Wow. Sure you have to be very careful. And you know why Sash is so knowledgeable is because he does do cooking classes. Absolutely. We do cooking classes in the restaurant every six to eight weeks. Okay, so back to our dishes, the potatoes and cauliflower. What have you done to them? Okay, so we're going to be doing a spiced cauliflower potato, otherwise known as uh, gobi musalam, inside the restaurant. Um, as you can tell right now, I've already pre-fried uh, the cauliflower and the potato. We use 100% vegetable canola oil, so it's good for you. So we're going to start up over here. Just, uh, this is just canola oil. Okay, we're tempering our pan out. So you'll notice that I just kind of curve it all around the pan. The reason that I do that is it gives us a bit of a non-stick coating. I think we've come right up to temperature. And we'll know the perfect way to knowing is putting a little bit of ginger garlic in. And if we get the sizzle, that means we know. That means we're, yeah. we're ready okay. to go. Yeah. 
No sizzle. Oh, okay. No so sizzle. We're, we're waiting. We're going to wait <laughs> for sure. There we go. Okay. Now, a good idea right at this point as well um, is to add a bit of garam masala as well. Okay. And th what that's going to do is it's going to start releasing the spices into the air. Okay. You also want to be very, very careful because once you've started at this level, um, you don't want to burn the spices because we are going at high heat right now. So just mix. Okay, so our spices have come up to temperature. Yeah. Okay, right now we're just going to add a little bit of tomato base. And we, want, we need to cook the tomato. This is going to form just a very light curry gravy for us, if you will. Okay? Now for that deep, rich uh, color that some people are associate with uh, cauliflower, here comes the Hungarian paprika. Okay? Okay. And just a little bit of turmeric. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. For your digestive system. For the system, absolutely. Now here comes our thickener, which is the onion base. And right away you'll notice, okay, now again, no gelatin, no uh, nor stuff. Starch. I was going to say corn no, starch. No basically. corn starch. Corn starch like no, 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 no. Nothing like that. And again, we don't use, um, uh, for the celiacs out there, there's no gluten products. There's nothing like that. So that's really important as well. I know they really appreciate that. Here's our, fan here's our fantastic base, okay? Now, right now, this is, be, this is where you would start making decisions like adding a little bit of uh, red chili if you wanted. Uh, if you wanted to add the mint right now to go in a little bit of a different direction, you could do that as well, okay? okay. But we're going to just do a very simple um, cauliflower dish, and we're going to throw in our cauli. And you're going to see that the white cauli picks up the color really, really well, okay? Let's get the potatoes in there too. Now, at this step as well is when I like to add my cilantro. Now, some people don't like cilantro. I love it. I think it adds great color. Okay. If you want a bit of salt right now, good, good time. And if you want the piquant, here it comes. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we just give this a quick blend, okay? I'm assuming that um, once you've blanched your cauli and you've blanched or you've uh, fried your potatoes, um, that they're still hot. So you can go straight from, from that step to this step over here. Now we're almost done with this one over here. What I would add to this is a bit of uh, ginger as okay. a finisher. So let's do that. And you are good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Now, if you want to get all Emerald Legacy style, you can just throw some uh, paprika around the border of the plate. There we go. And then make some wham-bam noises, and you are... Bam! You are, you are set. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Sat. Thank you again, Tracy, this for the opportunity. This has been entertaining. Sat's from the <laughs> East India Company. This is, I'm going to say, spicy cauliflower and potatoes, but it is more... Gobi Musalam, whatever you would like. Gobi Musalam. There you go. And Darren's going to have a lot of fun pairing a wine with it. Thank you again, Tracy. So stay tuned, because Darren is going to be pairing a wine with this dish momentarily on Shaw TV.